Hey guys, Corbin here. In the last video I talked about why I bought an Avid CNC. Now let's go into the details on how I tried to make it into a professional level machine. So one of the biggest complaints of the Avid CNC is that the table is not heavy enough. Let's go take a look at a regular knee mill and see how it's built. So a traditional manual knee mill like this Bridgepoint clone and Inco from 1990 has a big cast iron table or a big cast iron base that provides a lot of stability even though it has a really small table. This is great at reducing chatter when you're doing cuts. So the Avid CNC usually comes with an aluminum extrusion table and legs. I decided to weld up my own out of steel and it weighs twice as much as the standard table. Avid CNC has a model available for their machine so you can download it and load it into some CAD software and design a table around it. I did that for mine in Fusion 360. You can download the file, link will be in the description. So I settled on using 4 inch by 4 inch steel tubing for the long lengthwise members that is a quarter inch thick. For the legs, instead of using 4x4, four four, I used 4x2, four also quarter inch thick. I think I could have used 4x4s four just to get a little bit more heft, but it didn't add a lot of weight. And when I did structural analysis inside of Fusion, it didn't seem necessary to actually have the additional strength, so I decided to save a little bit of money and go for 4x2s. Four so I went with three legs on each side for six legs total, and I did this because this is what Avid did for their default leg set, so I thought it would be plenty strong enough. Now I needed a way of leveling the table, so on the bottom of the legs is a plate welded on that's drilled and tapped for some feet that I got on McMaster car. These feet can support up to a few thousand pounds for each particular foot, so they are plenty strong enough and they're relatively cheap. Put the link in the description. So one of the things I did that was either interesting or strange is that these cross members down here are at a nice height to add a table underneath there. I didn't put a table underneath here because I wanted it open for the front to have access to the vertical work table. And I also lowered that front cross member down a little bit so I could access it a little bit better. I don't think I needed to have lowered it and I probably should have put them all at the same height. And, uh, but I didn't. So the steel for the table cost me about $800 and I had a welder friend order the steel for me and he can get a much better deal than I could from the same supplier. If I was to go as an individual to that supplier and get the same steel, they would have charged me a lot more. This type of operation is just total BS, but it's just the way the industry works. They give a better price to people who uh, buy a lot of stuff from them. So my friend cut the steel to the rough length I needed. The long pieces were cut from one 20-foot piece. They were less than 10 feet long each. The legs and the cross members, I had to get two 20-foot pieces for those to cut them all up. My first task was to take some scrap quarter-inch steel plate and drill some holes in it for the feet. I used my knee mill, but this could have easily been done on a drill press or even a hand drill. Precision isn't really important but it was a good excuse for me to use the mill. I drilled a hole and I tapped it for the required 3 8 16 threads on the feet. Once I had the feet drilled and tapped, I could weld the plates onto my legs. I opted for TIG welding everything together, but I'm not sure this was a great decision and that will come up more later. TIG welding the feet plates was pretty easy. I could set it up on my welding table and weld it at a comfortable position and get some pretty decent welds out of it. Next, I had to figure out the best way to weld up the entire table. I settled on welding the legs to the lengthwise pieces and my plan was to lift it up uh, and support the cross members and weld them on. The alternative idea was to weld up the entire table lift the entire table up and then add the legs on later, but I thought that'd be more difficult and I wouldn't be able to manage the weight by myself. Once I started welding the legs on, I realized the cuts, my friend, weren't quite 90 degrees. I could have offset them a little bit and welded them on, but I decided to make it easier on myself and just mill a 90 degree angle on my knee mill so they'd be perfectly perpendicular to the, uh, to, to the base pieces. 
it was at this point when I started welding up things that I realized I really suck at vertical TIG welding. It's pretty difficult and I haven't practiced it a lot. I figured I would stick with TIG instead of switching to MIG just because I thought it would produce a stronger joint. Once I welded three legs on the lengthwise members, I could prop them up with a piece of wood and hold the cross member in place. I used a tape measure to ensure the table was roughly square and then I could weld the pieces all together, trying to keep it relatively level. At this point I also started having some problems with my TIG welder. The fluid for cooling was a bit cloudy and started causing some clogging issues, making the welder shut down. So I had to take it apart, clean it. I also managed to get a hole in my coolant line and instead of being able to fix it, I just put a little catcher underneath it and caught the fluid, poured it back in once that catcher got full. This layer became a bigger problem that I actually had to deal with. So at this point, I found out a problem that I had caused. Welding on the middle legs caused the beam to bend. I'm not too surprised, but it was a bigger problem than I realized. So what happened is when I welded on the middle, it caused it to expand and bow downwards at that point. I opted to deal with this later and you'll see my solution coming up. I did end up trimming a few of my cross members from the rough cutting that my friend did. I just dropped them down my horizontal bandsaw and cut them. I finished welding the table up. I should mention that I always tack welded the pieces on before running the complete bead. I did resort to using the MIG welder for a few of the last parts just because it's so much faster. Once the table was welded up, I could lift it up with a jack and add the feet on. The welding did make the threads a little bit tight, so I had to run a tap through them again to clean them up. I built the standard aluminum CNC base on top of my welded table following Avid's directions, but I had to come up with a way to attach the base to my steel table. So I figured the only way to do this would be to drill and tap a hole in the steel and screw it in from the bottom to go into rolling T-nuts in the uh, aluminum extrusion. This worked, but it was tricky to bolt and align up the T-nuts, and adjustments were pretty difficult. I've since learned about a corner bracket gusset thing that you can use. I'll link to it and show a picture here. These would have made things a lot easier. I could have drilled and tapped in the top, and I might actually switch over to this later due to some other reasons, which I'll discuss at some point. So at this point, I leveled the aluminum extrusions using machinist level. This could get everything perfectly flat and I just decided to shim one of the sides quite a bit to get it up to the proper height that I needed to have it be at. Once it was pretty level, I went ahead and built the rest of the CNC machine on the aluminum extrusions. So welding my own table presents some other problems. The cable track supports didn't have anywhere to attach to. So I decided to cut the brackets in half and simply drill and tap some holes in the steel to attach them on the sides. This worked out totally fine and I roughly placed them at the same location found on the aluminum extrusion legs. I also had to figure out where to mount the electronic control boxes. The cable track supports that I previously cut in half had a good 90 degree bend that allowed me to drill and tap some holes into the steel legs for an attachment point. I used some wood screws to attach the electronic boxes to the 2x4s. So that's how I welded up the steel table for my base for the Avid CNC. I think if I were to do something a little bit different, I might add some 45 degree supports to make it even stronger when the machine's moving in the lengthwise direction. Later on, I might actually fill the steel tubing up with concrete to just add more weight and heft to it. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. So follow along in the next video, I'm gonna talk about how I did some precise alignment to get better precision and accuracy out of the Avon CNC machine.